In this session, we are going to discuss Warshall's algorithm. Warshall's algorithm finds the path matrix of a given graph. Obviously, this matrix will be of the type Boolean. That means, at the row R, at the column C, if the value is true or 1, it indicates that from that very row to column, there is a path, either direct path or through some other nodes. And if the path does not exist, then that particular location will be filled up with 0 or false. That means, Warshall's algorithm gives us the path matrix and the matrix will be of the form Boolean. So, it will tell whether from this particular source vertex or node, can I reach to a target vertex. So, that answer will be obtained at the respective location of the matrix. So, this path matrix, sorry, this path matrix will be obtained at the end of the execution of an of a Warshall's algorithm. Look at the algorithm. Now, how does it work? See, a directed graph G with n nodes is maintained in memory by its adjacency matrix A. The algorithm finds the Boolean path matrix P of the graph G. So, from the adjacency matrix, how can I get the respective uh, the Boolean matrix? It can be obtained in this way. Repeat for I, Z, I and J from 1 to N. This particular statement means very simple for I is equal to 1 to N and within that particular loop for J is equal to 1 to N. Otherwise, in algorithm, we can write it in this way. If the adjacency matrix for the row I and column J contains 0, then the path matrix will be containing 0. That means, that, that is, that means there is no direct edge in between I and J. That means, the uh, adjacency matrix will have 0 there, but in case of any non-zero value at i j location of the adjacency matrix A, then the path matrix i and j location will be filled up with 1. That means, there is some way to move from this to that because the edges are there. So, initially it will be formed. So, from the adjacency matrix, we are forming this path matrix, very initial path matrix. It is not the answer to be returned by the Warshall's algorithm. Now, for k is equal to 1 to n, just look the previous look at the previous video where we have discussed the Floyd's algorithm to find the cost matrix of a given graph. So we are doing the same here, but here the it is not cost, but it is a path matrix. So what will happen? K is denoting through that is through one, through two, through three, and dot dot dot, dot up to through node n. If it is not clear, I am just going to discuss with that. Let us suppose value of k is equal to say 2. In one of the iterations, it must be having the value 2. Say from 3 to 4, in the initial path matrix, we are having 0. But from through 2, I am getting 3 to 2, that is a path. 2 to 4, that is a path. If I am not getting, I am repeating again. From 3 to 4, the path matrix is having value 0. That means, there is no path between 3 to 4 till now obtained. But when you are going for through k, when you are going for through k, so now let us let us suppose the value of k in one of the iterations will be 1, then 2, then 3. Let it let, let, let it be it has got 2. So from 3 to 2, that is a path. So the path matrix is containing 1. From 2 to 4, that is a path. So the path matrix is containing 1. So it is true that through this I cannot have a path. But through this, I can have a path. So, that is why I shall go for this in this way. That is 0 or 1 and 1. So, 0 or 1 and 1. So, 1 and 1 is 1. So, I am getting this 0 or 1. We know that in case of all logic, if one of the inputs is 0, sorry, in, in 1, then the output will be 1. So, 0 or 1 is equal to 1. So, I shall tell that it is possible to move from 3 to 4, there is a path, either direct or indirect, here it is indirect. Otherwise, if you consider, say, say I am just taking this one, say 1 to 3, 
that is a path and also there is a path through 2. So obviously in that case as we are having path already so we need not to bother to check whether there is some other parallel path or not. So we are writing this one either P i j what is i that is a row what is j that is a column what is k that is a note through which we are going to calculate. So, if p i j itself is containing 1, so 1 or anything is equal to 1, but if p i j contains 0, then 0 or a is equal to a that means it depends upon this result. So, now this result will depend upon p i k and p k j. So, whatever the rough work I have done here on the screen and that is depicting the logic of this Warshall's algorithm. I think to have the better understanding let us go for one example. So, please watch the next video where we will we'll be going for another example on this Warshall's algorithm to make it more crystal clear to you. Thanks for watching this one.